Well, my clock now shows six, my watch shows six o'clock. So I will call this meeting to order, starting with the roll call. And if you'd please raise your hands to acknowledge your presence, I'd appreciate it. Andor Zinsky. And here. here, John Hay. Here. Thank you. Paul Mayer. Here. Al Walden. Mr. Walden, not here yet. Okay. Council liaison, Tim Waters. Here. Thank you, Tim. Moving on, I ask for we entertain a motion to approve this evening's agenda. So moved. Say second, please. I second. Done. Item three, previous minutes from the meeting last in February. Entertain a motion that they be approved. Assuming there's no additions, deletions. Recommend we uh, approve this, the uh, minutes from last meeting as, as written. Motion made, entertain a second, please. Second. Done. Uh, this you need to vote, Marshall. Have I'm sorry. Yes. Um, all in favor of approving the last month's minutes, please raise your hand. So moved, thank you. Next item was public invited to be heard. I understand there are none at this time, but let's just confirm. Do we know of any members from the public who wish to speak at this time? There is no public. Good. Hearing none, uh, let's move on to the communications of golf professionals monthly report. Jeff? Yeah, um, Sam, do you wanna go first? Here I am, sorry. Um, hello, everybody. Ute Creek reports. Um, so January and February, as we discussed last month, was um, not very good since we were, we're not opening any days. Um, so we were about 67,000 behind in revenue through February. Um, but the good news is we're making up for it in March. Um, I think that probably by the end of the month we'll be 50,000 ahead for the month of March. So we're definitely getting some ground. Weather's been great. And uh, when it's good, the demand still seems to be there. Um, so I'm pretty encouraged. I think it's, um, if it continues this way, I think we're gonna have a good year. If our maintenance guys quit punching holes in the greens, we would have a really good year. But um, today was our aerification day. And the weather was great for it. And with the weather coming up this week, I think it's going to really water in the greens really nice. And I think by the weekend, we should be looking really good again. That's it for you. Any questions? Hearing none, let's move on. Brian. Brian. All right. So same thing, basically, with what Sam had to say there, you know. Uh, opened zero days in February. I think the first day we opened one day uh, early March, um, but we really didn't open until March 13th. Um, so uh, no revenue uh, or no rounds in February. Revenue uh, February was only $618. That was mainly uh, ex uh, the uh, players cards and uh, some annual passes. Um, very far behind obviously of last year, but uh, Again, like Sam said, weather was beautiful this weekend and we were packed and, you know, it's a good, it's really good to see it, um, especially with the hundred year anniversary for the course. And I think people are going to be, uh, people are going to be wanting to play golf everywhere this, this summer. So I think we're going to be very busy. Any questions for sunset? Hearing none, Keith, Mr. Martin, please. All right. Hey, everybody. Well, you know, it's kind of hard going third because it's pretty much the same story. Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how they made as much money as they did since I only made 354 so uh, for the year. So anyway, uh, March is March is really doing well, and we're about 
close to 30,000 ahead of where we were this time last year for the month of March. So we're making up that ground pretty quick. And uh, that's really good. It's nice and they're both and they're both right. When we are open, we are busy. And uh, that's really encouraging. So any questions for Twin Peaks? Takes care of it. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Next time was old business. I understand there is none. Is that still true? That's correct. Very good. New business. First item is the uh, golf course advisory bylaws. I hope you've all had an opportunity to review them before this evening's meeting. If so, are there any questions, items uh, to discuss, review? I do, I do have a couple of questions, Marshall. Sure. So there were a couple of some items in red on the bylaws, and I'm wondering what what those reflect. They're changes, obviously. Yep. the The first one is in title, or excuse me, section three. Right. It changes the official meeting time. It used right. to be seven o'clock the last time we updated the bylaws. We now meet at six o'clock, so it's representing that. And then the second one is in section 12, and it just changes my title from operation manager, which was Larry Mills when he was here. And my title is uh, recreation and golf manager. Those are the only two changes that staff was recommending. Are, are we being asked to approve those tonight? I'm about to do that, um, Paul. Well, I'd, I'd like to suggest something, if I may. Sure. Uh, on section three on the meeting time, it seems kind of unnecessary if we change a meeting time to have to get the board together to amend the bylaws. And I think we could overcome that if instead of section three saying, well, the meeting will be held on the fourth Monday of each month, we just say at the time and location designated by the executive secretary. And if we change the time, we don't have to amend the bylaws. I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, any comments from the other board members? I would entertain a, uh, a uh, motion to, go ahead, Paul. If we're gonna approve everything at once, let me suggest one other thing. Uh, I just have a question on, uh, Section 15 in amending the bylaws, it currently says that it takes the approval of five board members to do that. Right now, the board only consists of five members. If we have a meeting to address the bylaws and one member is absent, we can't take any action. But it makes sense to say that a, a majority of the board, no, no fewer than four, would be required to approve a change in the bylaws. Just oh, I think we'll point. have a discussion later about additional potential board members. So I think at this point, I, I would not be in favor of changing that. I think we need to wait till we get the full count of board members. Yeah, but I, I think what Paul's point is, we don't have five board members out is not on so we okay. really can't approve approve any anything this evening. In that case, we would need to table. We could put this back on the yes. the, the next meeting, which I think is in May, and uh, hopefully we'll have all five of the board members at that time. Therefore, let me uh, entertain a motion that uh, review and a potential approval of the bylaws be tabled until uh, our next meeting in April, at which time we'll discuss it again. Anyone in favor of that motion? Uh -oh. I need a second, please. I'll second. Good, moved and seconded. So my laws will be brought up again in April. You have to vote, I think, don't you? Pardon? And we have to vote. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting once it's approved. Uh, all in favor of the motion, raise your hands. Thank you. Next item was the youth instruction opportunities. Jeff. 
Uh, that I think Keith's going to lead us off with that. Thank you. All right, I'll uh, I'll I'll do the youth instruction, and Sam, you can kind of cover the tournament stuff if you want. I think that'll probably be a good uh, good way of handling this. Uh, as far as youth instruction, I'll, I'll I'll refer specifically to Twin Peaks, although I know that that Brian has some similar programs, and so does uh, some of the teachers out at U Creek as far as programs go. But what we do at Twin Peaks is uh, on Mondays. Every, every Monday starting the first Monday after Memorial Day, we have what's called First Step. And this is for the children that are five to nine years old. And they show up about quarter to 10 and we get all their contact and information and so forth. And, uh, and once we get them all gathered up, we take them out to the range for an hour and a half. And uh, half the time is on the range and half time's on the putting green. And we play all sorts of fun games with them and we gamble with them a little bit. Well, I shouldn't say gamble because they win only, but they have a really good time doing it. And uh, it's, it's all about creating an environment that is safe, where it's fun, they're enjoying themselves. And for the youngsters like that, you know, we're, we're not really wanting them so much to go running out on the golf course yet, but just to be learning to acclimate what it's like to be on the range. And um, so we do that and then at uh, 1130, we, we meet back up there and make sure that all the parents get reacquainted with their children. And then we have a lunch if they wanna do it. It's an optional lunch of a uh, hot dog, chips and a drink for $3. And the initial, uh, the initial lesson fee for it is $20 per person. So it's a very affordable, affordable way for the children to get out, get some instruction, um, learn safety and so forth like that. Then on uh, Tuesday, we, we do what's called next step, which is the day after first step. And we do this all summer, by the way. But uh, Tuesday, it's kind of the same format. We meet them at 10. We break them up into groups um, a little bit more. A lot of times on Mondays, we don't break them up into groups. We do them all at once together. Uh, but Tuesdays, we get a lot more kids. And it's ages 10 to 18. And we, uh, we break them up into a couple different groups based on age and so forth. And sometimes gender as well. We kind of try to make it so everyone kind of gets to know each other and have a good time. And half the group will be on the range for the first half of the lesson. And then the other half will be on the putting green. And halfway through, we will flip flop. And again, we're, we're, we're playing games with them. Steve has a bunch of putting contests. He sets up a little putting course on the, on the green. And if they, if they two putt, they get a quarter. If they make their putt, they get a dollar. And out on the range, we put trash cans out there and, and baskets out there. You knock over a basket, you get a quarter, you hit a ball in a trash can, you get five bucks. So we walk around paying them and they, they think that's pretty cool. So at 1130, we meet over by the putting green sign and those who want to play golf that day uh, will then pair up into foursomes. I, I obviously am helping them do that. And uh, we, we set them up into groups, usually one through it. I think we've had as many as 10 or 11 groups play. Huh. And we send them out to the tee box based on their ability. I tell them which tees they should play. I tell them they get six shots on every hole. They get four putts on every hole. And uh, after that sixth shot, if they're not on the green yet, they got to pick the ball up, take it to the green, and they get four putts. And if the ball's not in the hole and four putts, they got to move to the next hole. And I would tell you that these kids are our probably our most efficient, consistent, fastest playing group of golfers at Twin Peaks. They, oh. are, they are two hours or less every single week. And it's really, it's really neat. So after I pair them up into groups, I actually make them go up to the pro shop with their green fee money. They have to handle the money. They have to meet the guy at the front counter. They got to tell them what group they're in and they got to pay them their green fee money. And it's all about just teaching them to feel comfortable at the golf course. And even with the lesson money, we make them pay for the lesson money. We don't want the parents around. We want to deal with just the kids. So the, the kids have to be responsible and they pay us directly for the lesson money as well. And it's just more lessons about responsibility. So after they uh, pay their green fee, they go into the restaurant and they got to pay their $3 for their lunch. And then they go into the, the, uh, the restaurant, big dining room, and they, they eat their lunch and I stand in there and tell them they got to clean up after themselves and pick up. And about, I don't know, 1145, 12 o'clock, that's when we start sending them out to the tee. So I'll, I'll be in there and tell them which group is on the tee and be letting them know. And I, we, we get a little rotation going. We got a group on the tee. 
We got a group that's kind of back behind that group. We got a group that's standing back by the fence. We got all three groups all ready to go at all times. And so they just know to just hit it and go. And it really works out really well. And uh, we've been doing it for, I'm going to say, at least 12 years, 13 years, this program at Twin Peaks. It's been really successful. We've really enjoyed it. And I think we've developed a lot of really good kids. And out of this program then kind of comes the next step for junior golf stuff. And that's, you know, I'll be honest with you. This is where I, this is where I get to kind of really see who's interested, who's not interested, who enjoys the game and who is, who is a good candidate for private lessons. So many, many times after a, after a, a, you know, some time on the driving range or after, after the day is over, I will track down a parent and say, your child is ready. They don't always say yes. Sometimes it takes them several years, but a lot of those kids, several of those kids have gone on to play college golf. So that's really cool. Uh, so that's kind of what we do at, at Twin Peaks. I think we probably do it on a little larger scale than they do it at the other two golf courses. It's really tough to do it at sunset, you know, without having a bigger driving range. And obviously there's just not enough room down there to get a lot going on. But I know Ryan makes the most of what he has down there. Um, and I know at Ute, it's really tough because even on Tuesdays, it's hard to get access to that golf course in the afternoon. So the playing component on Tuesdays, I think is super important for the kids because I don't know about you guys, but I never, I never really fell in love with golf hitting range balls or practicing putting and chipping. I fell in love with golf being on the golf course. And uh, I think it's so important that the kids get that access to the golf course. And the city has done such a good job of keeping that reasonable when they, you know, on Tuesday for $30, basically, they can, they get, they, they get there at 10 o'clock and they may not leave till after three o'clock. And that's, you know, that's five hours that, you know, the kids get to be at the golf course and it's a, just safe and they, they get more independence as they do it. So it's really been neat. Any questions for the program? Keith, I didn't hear, what's the age bracket for the youth you accept? The, the Monday group, which are typically beginners. And if I get some beginners that are older, but are still beginners, I'll encourage them to go to the Monday group is five, five years old to nine years old. Oh. And then the Tuesday group is 10 all the way up to 18. Um, but a lot of times we do get, there's some carryover. I don't, I don't hold that steadfast. Right. You know, if I get, if I get an eight year old, that's, you know, a good player and wants to be part of the group on Tuesdays, I, by all means allow that and vice versa. If I get a, 12 year old that really is needing remedial help and, and, and to be with the younger, you know, the younger kids where there's not such a, you know, everyone is so good around them then I'll let them go with the younger kids on Mondays. So Great. it all works out really good. We I think, we, I think our safety records outstanding. I think we've had only one, uh, one accident in the last eight years and it was two brothers, of course. So <laughs> What, what numbers do you average, Keith, on each day? You know, these are just going to be ballpark. But um, I would say typically Mondays, Mondays we're going to go anywhere from 25 on the low end up to 40 um, on the high end. So we will get some, you know, and you just never know. I'll get to remind me in a second. I'll get to what, how they sign up for it. But um and Tuesdays, we, we generally do 35 to 50 almost every time. So the way we run it, it's a drop-in program. So there's no pre-registration. You just show up. And, um, and fortunately, it's, it's been, it's, we've never pushed it past capacity where we couldn't handle it. Um, and if we did, we would create a third station and they would go to the back of the range to make that happen. But it's a drop-in program. The parents love it because, you know, parents are gone with their children all summer. And so trying to register for something for the whole summer is difficult. So being able to just say, oh, it's Tuesday, let's go to golf. And they drop in. And, and um, we really have eliminated, I mean, literally our sign-up sheet is a, is, a, is a blank piece of paper that I walk down with on a clipboard. To just, and that's just to get moms, you know, the child's name, mom or dad's name and the emergency contact phone number. So right. I think the parents like it because there's not a lot of bureaucracy involved in this at all. The kids really, they, they have a good time, they enjoy it. And it's, it's a very user-friendly program for both the parents and the kids. 
with Paul Mayer. I'm sure it's not an issue with, with the real young kids, but with the older kids, do you spend some time with them on caring for the course, replacing divots, fixing ball marks, et cetera? Absolutely, Paul. That's a great that's a great question. But yes, we absolutely do. We make ball marks in the greens and teach them how to how to use a ball mark repair tool. Absolutely, 100%. We talk to them about playing, uh, picking up their divots. We talk to them about picking up trash. Uh, the, kind of the big general thumb, you know, that I that I really want everyone to be aware of. Is I want them to leave the golf course better than they found it. And so we're constantly talking to them about all those things. I can't say that it always means that it happens, but they it is brought up and it is talked to them. You know, they get talked to about it. You need to do that for a bunch of adult golfers as well. Yeah. Any other questions of Keith? It's great. I have, I have a question. Hey, Keith, you're talking about managing 25, 30, 35 children. Who's the we that manages all these? That's children? a good question, John. So <laughs> it's really it's really kind of cool because it, it you know the we is, is is predominantly me and and Steve Kunselman, my assistant. Right. But then what's even better that, that has really happened over the last few years, we get all these high school kids that play high school golf that that actually want to be part of it and show up and help the kids so i'll get i think at one point last year we had six different young men helping us with the, with the children and steve and i could do it believe it or not we could do it without any help but as far as shuttling buckets of balls from one side of the range to the other when the kids run out of balls you know because it's it's nothing for us to have 25 stations on the driving range along the bottom of the range and so we got 25 kids at the same time hitting balls and and some kids are actually diligent and really try hard and are really trying to get the most out of you know and other ones are just machine gunners and they can't hit a ball fast enough and they sometimes hit half the pile so they run out of balls pretty quick so when having those having those high school volunteers out there really has helped um shuttling balls back and forth it's cut down on the amount of steps that i get you know when i do it but the the, uh, the kids are enjoying getting the balls quicker to them. So it works out good. Uh, any other questions, Keith? Hearing none, let's move on to uh, item D was how to schedule a tournament. And I'm gonna let Sam go ahead and take that because I think okay. they, I think Sam's scheduling is gonna be a little more, um, we don't necessarily both do it the same, but I think that you're gonna, enjoy the way he does it a little more than the way I do it. So I think that'll be beneficial for you all. Good. Sam? Okay, thank you. And um, I just want to say uh, about Keith's uh, junior golf program. I, I grew up in Phoenix and at a course called Maryville. And um, the head pro there was the junior golf leader for the PJ several years in a row. And I got to tell you, Keith's program reminds me very much of the program that I grew up in. And um, as Keith mentioned about spending your days playing golf, that's where I spent my childhood was on a golf course. And um, thanks to pros like Keith to make that happen. Um, we're very lucky to have him here in Longmont. So I just want to mention that. So I uh, so do we have the uh, presentation for the um, for the tournaments, Jeff? We do. Let me know when you're ready. I guess I'm ready. Can you guys see that? There we okay, go. There it is. Got it. So whenever I saw this uh, agenda item on the um, for the meeting, I felt like. Um, Bobby Boucher trying to explain how to be uh, how to sack quarterbacks. So I thought, you know what, maybe I'll just put a presentation together and maybe it might make, make it easier to explain. So here we go. Next slide, please. So to get the um, to get the process started for a tournament is really simple. We just basically select a date. Uh, time number of players that they may want and if it works out for us um, the day of the week where it's not going to interfere with uh, which a potentially busy day for us. Uh, we schedule it, we settle on a price, collect a deposit to hold the date. And it's really that simple. Um, most of our tournaments are 
fundraisers, and um, they're typically a shotgun start and a, typically a scramble format. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so this is really where the work begins after the once the tournament's booked um, is to try to generate players. And um, one thing that we do to help out with that on our end is we once they develop a flyer, we'll post it on our bulletin board on the clubhouse, um, post it on our website. Danielle does a great job helping us with that. Send out e blast for the event as well. And um, we do everything we can to get them. Tournaments range anywhere from 50 to 144 players. And again, they're typically a shotgun start. Next slide, please. So as we start getting closer to the event, um, about a week prior to the event, we need to have a, a list of the players and the teams. And we got this uh, tournament software program called Golf Genius. And once we have all the players, we just simply enter them into the program. Um, I like to meet with the tournament committee, just go through all the details so that on the day of, everything runs nice and smooth. Meet with Dan and his team to make sure that uh, everything is all set up on the maintenance end. And um, with our food and beverage staff, get all that lined up as well, because typically the tournaments do a cookout afterwards as well. <clears throat> next, next slide, please. Once all of the uh, players are set up into the Golf Genius program, um, it makes everything so much easier. Back in the old days, we used to do everything by hand. And with Golf Genius, we just print everything out. So we'll print out proximity markers. That's what we use for the, like the um, pole contest, like long drive, close to the pin. Um, pole assignments, those will go on the golf carts. So when the players arrive, they'll know which cart they go to and where their tee assignment would be. Next page. Then also from that program, we can print up an alphabetical list. Um, we post those around the clubhouse on the morning of the tournament. We use those at the check-in table as the players arrive to make things run nice and smooth. Just go alphabetically, we can let them know what holes they're assigned to. Next, next page, please. Then we also can print up the scorecards and the rule sheet. Um, and all that will go on the, um, on the golf carts as well. Next slide. Okay, then on the morning of the event, um, we get in before the sun comes up and start loading up the golf carts, get the um, whole assignments on there, the um, scorecards, goodie bags. A lot of times the tournaments will have like tea prizes with, um, with gifts, we'll put those in the cards. The most, most important card and the one that's most, most recommended by all the tournaments is our beverage cards. So those, the beverage card staff gets in early, gets all that lined up as well. Next slide, please. Uh, maintenance will get out and we'll get everything set up. Um, as far as like the contest holes, sometimes you'll see like a straight line down the middle of the fairway for our closest to the line. Um, sometimes they'll put like a circle on the greens um, for like to raise extra money. Bet so much money, you get inside the circle, you can double your money or whatever, but there's chances uh, of that for the players to win more money and also for the tournament to raise more for their fundraiser. And one of the most important things is to double check the yardage um, like on the, like this hole here is number 16. That's our num that's our typical hole for the um, hole in one contest. The tournament will pay, um, they'll pay a fee to an insurance company for like a $25,000 prize or a car or whatever it may be. And if they happen to make that and our yardage isn't correct, then um, Jeff Friesner is buying somebody a car. So we got we to make sure that those are very accurate and with our new uh, range finding devices, that certainly helps. Next slide, please. About 20 minutes prior to the event, I like to get everybody together just to go over um, all the rules. I like to thank the sponsors for coming out, 
um, the coordinator for putting the tournament together, where to return the cards, scorecards, where to meet for lunch, and where and for the awards. Next slide. Then while they're out having a good time, um, we're still working our tails up and everything together. We've got a buffet. We'll put the buffet together. Um, and we got kids on our golf course too, just like Keith's junior program. There's a little bit older. Um, looking at this guy here, he may have spent a little too much time with the beverage cart, possibly too. But um, tournaments are a lot of fun, and it's really fun putting them together. It's a lot of work, but it sure is a lot of fun. Um, next slide, please. And this is it. This is it. At the end of the day, we um, post the uh, scores. Uh, the score. The scoreboards you see there, those are also printed off of the uh, software program. Um, we determine the winners, serve lunch, hand down awards, and we're done. And it's really just that simple. A lot of work, but it's simple. Any, any questions? Sam, I saw on one of the first slides, there's a $150 charge to reserve things. What is the, the cost to have the tournament and what did the tournament packages mean? Okay, go back up to the first slide and I'll show you, please. So this is a tournament agreement here and our basic packages, um, the Monday through Friday is $77 per person and on the weekends is 82. That includes a green fee, cart fee, range balls, and ten dollars per person for merchandise certificates. And that's typically pulled together. Like for instance, if you have hundred players, they have a thousand dollars, and they typically will use that to pay out like their first, second, third place team maybe, and and for their long drive and and close to the pin contest, things of that nature. One hundred fifty dollar deposit that just simply holds the date for them. If they want to add a lunch onto it, then it just depends on what they want for their lunch. Then that will just be an extra add on. Sam, could you yeah, talk a little bit for... about what tournaments you have scheduled right now? Well, in a typical year, we will do between 15 to 20 tournaments a year. Um, and then 2020 happened and we did zero tournaments because of the social distancing. We got a late start in um, in 2019 and we ended up with six tournaments. This year we actually are up to 10. Um, I think the smallest tournament that we have is around 50 players. And then we have a couple of big tournaments at 144 players, oh. which is the full field, two groups on each team. Any other questions of uh, Sam? Sam, thank you, sir. I appreciate your presentation. Looks good. Thank you. Moving on to the final item under new business is board pre-interview guidelines and recommendations. Jeff, you were going to take care of that, please. Yep. So in your packet, there was a summary of what you all are being asked uh, as we look at uh, new board candidates. Normally, the golf board is appointed, the golf board members are appointed it at the end of the year, but because we have two open places right now, we will be going through a process in, in May to uh, help council select board members. And what we're being asked to do is conduct some initial interviews. So we would need tonight, if possible, for you all to appoint two of the members to work with me to conduct interviews for whoever would apply for the, the board. Uh, that's kind of a quick summary. Uh, then, then those two board members and myself will come to the next meeting, make a recommendation of who we think would be the best candidates. We'll provide that to council. Council will then um, choose whether they want to do some of their own interviews 
or take your recommendations and uh, appoint two new people to the board. Do any of the existing board wish to um, approve, oh, sorry, me, volunteer to help Jeff in this process? He asked for two volunteers. Anybody? I'll volunteer. Anne is number one, thank you. Number two. Yeah, I'm more than happy to do it, but bring brand new to the board. I'm not sure if, if uh, I understand. You know, that's fine. Yeah. Up to it's, you, it's, Paul. This is brand new, so none of the board members have done this. Right. So this will be our our first time for all advisory boards uh, throughout the city that are in midterm appointments. So I have a, a list of questions that have been mm -hmm. provided. I think what would be best is. If, Paul, if you choose to do that, that you and I and Ann would sit down and, and talk about the process. Right. And then once uh, the candidates were ready, we would get uh, interviews scheduled. They'd be 30 minutes in length at the most. Well, I'll be happy to do it. Okay. Good, thank you. So Tim and Ann, thank you very much. Can I make a, just an observation? Sure uh <clears throat> this is a new approach for the council yes. you all know because if you went through the process of filling out your application getting a five minute interview right <clears throat> and on a saturday amidst 50 other interviews and then we're supposed to make a good decision as a council about these appointments and um it's not that we don't take it seriously i just for myself have never gone through a process where you get just a very slight snapshot of a candidate uh, without, you know, not that we don't look at their back, their applications, but we get, we get a, you know, a notebook of 600 pages of applications. So I, I will tell you, we don't look at any of them as carefully as we should. For me, it's always made more sense for you, members of boards and commissions, you know better what the, what the board or commission needs. You work with the staff, you'll make a much better selection than the, than the council would, in my opinion. The council still gets to make the appointment, but it'll be based on your recommendation. And I have no doubt that you'll, the, the applications will be scrutinized far more thoughtfully and carefully. You'll have much better questions and you'll spend rather than five minutes, up to 30 minutes with candidates and, and have a much better idea of what the fit is and whether or not you're getting somebody who helps advance the cause than the way we've been doing it. So I appreciate the fact you're willing to take it on. Please take it seriously. We, we, we do rely on boards and commissions. I think this will get us uh, the kind of composition of boards and commissions that more reflects what the needs of the staff are, the needs of the function, in this case, golf, and will better serve the city. Well, we agree. Thank you, Tim. That's well done. It's about time. So, Jeff, the other, I, I'm sorry. Could be in touch with uh, him and me about when we should get together? Yes. Yep. I'll be in touch. Okay. Yep. Thank you for agreeing to do that. Thanks, Ann. Next item on the agenda were items, miscellaneous items from staff. Yep. Are there any we need to uh, be aware of? Jeff? I have one item, and I'm very pleased to announce that the new golf carts will arrive on Wednesday for Twin Peaks and Sunset Golf Courses. So uh, when you go out there after Wednesday, you'll see the new fleet that, uh, that we have uh, leased and they'll be there for five years. We're working on the final agreement for Ute Creek and then we'll have a better estimate of when those carts will be delivered. That's excellent news. Thank yes. you. That's yep. well done. Any other items from staff? Hearing none. Are there any misleading items from the board, please? Hearing none, I move on and I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Well moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned, gentlemen, lady. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Night, everybody. everybody. Take care. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks.